Hello there everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today we are going to talk about drying and storing herbs. All the different methods, all that business. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do. If you've ever seen my apartment, it is filled to the brim with herbs drying, either hanging or in baskets. And I have quite a few jars of dried herbs that I have collected through the years. So it is something I'm very passionate about and a very core aspect of my practice and craft. And I figured it was about time to share with you all how you can do it too. Ultimately, drying herbs is a very simple thing to do. Uh, you just have to follow a couple easy steps and be kind of patient. It will vary a little bit depending on where you live. Uh, if you're in a more humid climate, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging versus if you are in a very dry climate, everything will dry very easily and quickly. So all of the stuff will be tweaked a little bit depending on the earth around you, but for the most part, it is very straightforward and very similar across all paths. So in this video, I will be covering two different methods of drying and my preferred method of storing herbs. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Right now, as I'm sure you all are sick of hearing, it has been a very busy time. I'm finishing up the final edits on my book and life is a little chaotic at the moment. There is not as much time in the day as I'm used to and as I'm someone who really loves to cook but just hasn't had the time to go to the grocery store or plan meals for that matter, HelloFresh has come in really handy. And I'm sure as we're getting into the fall season, many of you may be feeling very similar to me with back to school and uh, just getting back to a lot of busy life stuff. Those busy weeknights can be made so much easier with foolproof step-by-step -step recipes ready in around 30 minutes or less. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week. So you can enjoy those beautiful, wonderful, fresh flavors of the season right from your home. HelloFresh is the first carbon neutral meal kit company and nearly all of its packaging is recyclable. The recipes also include pre-portioned ingredients that means less prep for you and far less wasted food. HelloFresh cuts down on food waste by at least 25% when compared to grocery shopping, which I've gotta say is a pretty nice feeling. Their streamlined supply chain also reduces greenhouse gas emissions compared to grocery shopping, according to a University of Michigan study. Plus, in partnership with Plastic Bank, HelloFresh prevents 10 million bottles from entering the ocean every single year. Like I said, and as you all probably know pretty well by now, I absolutely love to cook. My dogs are my most helpful kitchen companions, and it's always just been such an important time in my day. And being able to get these meals already planned out and proportioned really helps me to save that time and energy and still get to do something I love. I don't really have the time to go to the grocery right now, and I absolutely don't have the time to plan delicious meals, and so this is such a great way to keep doing everything that makes me happy while also saving the time that I need to. So if you're in a similar boat to me and you think you may benefit from this, or if you're just interested in giving it a try, go to hellofresh.com and use the code thegreenwitch16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Once again, go to hellofresh.com and use the code thegreenwitch16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it, shall we? Alrighty, let's start with drying herbs. Like I said, there are two different methods, the basket drying method and the hanging method. Each is chosen depending on the kind of herb you are drying, uh, how it physically exists and what pieces you are drying. However, while there are two distinct methods of drying, they both do begin the same way. So let's start there. Begin by removing any damaged, diseased, or insect -y parts of the plant. This can be something like a bruised leaf or one that clearly has some yuck on it. Honestly, just pick off those leaves and flowers that aren't looking so good. You really want when you're drying herbs, especially if it's for medicine, for the herbs to be in a tip top shape. And even still, if you're just drying them for ornamental use, having them be uh, pretty is preferred. Once you've removed all of the off pieces of the plant, 
you can give the plant a rinse. This isn't always necessary. If there are any bugs or dirt on them, it's just a good idea to rinse them off. I personally prefer to do this in a big bowl of water. I just give them a good soak in there, kind of wash them around and rinse off everything. It works really well and doesn't damage the plant material any. Now, if you're trying to dry some roots, I would recommend really scrubbing those because they can take it. Take a toothbrush or something similar and just get all of the dirt that you can off of them because it'll be really packed onto them. But again, if your herbs are pretty clean and don't have any bugs on them, you can skip this step. At this point with the herbs, once they have been cleaned and I would dab them dry a little bit, this is when we separate into one of the two different drying methods, either the baskets or the hanging method. So let's begin first talking about the basket method. The basket method is typically used to dry roots, flower heads, and leaves, any kind of littler plant material. This is a very easy method of drying and uh, it's also a very fun one. It's a little more interactive than hanging bundles tend to be and uh, it's very beautiful to watch. So for baskets, you will typically need a basket and your herbs. Make sure you pick a basket that has a fairly loose weave. You want to be able to have air move through. If you are working with pretty fine herbs, it's a good idea to maybe place a cloth down on the basket as well so that the herbs don't get lost inside the weave. I definitely have lost quite a few little herbs to basket weaves but it can easily be avoided with a little cloth. In a pinch, you can also dry herbs on top of a cloth, but you have to be really careful with these guys because they don't get the same degree of aeration. You can also alternatively use a screen and that is a great method. I've worked with that before. I just tend not to have as many screens on hand as I do baskets, so it's really up to you what you have access to. Screens are great for very fine herbs, but a basket with a cloth works great. To dry herbs in this way, loosely lay the herbs into the basket. Make sure they aren't really touching each other and that it's only in a single layer. Make sure to give them kind of a nice little shuffle, scoot them around every day or every time you remember. This way they move about, every part of the plant gets to be hit with air and they dry out much better when you make sure to go through and give them a shuffle. Once the herbs crunch and crumble, then they're perfectly dry. You want to hear that crunch. It can be kind of hard to tell with roots, uh, but ultimately I just kind of let roots dry until they are rock hard and I am very sure that they are dry. Most herby herbs tend to dry within two to four weeks. It will vary depending where you live and this is where most of the change comes in. Regardless of where you live, it's important that your herbs are kept in a cool, dark, and dry place. Often a closet actually works really well or a cabinet. This can be challenging depending on where you live, but if you can attempt to keep it with as little moisture as possible, that is the most helpful. Just pay careful attention to herbs while they're drying and make sure they're drying evenly, aren't molding or anything like that. Every now and again, I do have herbs mold. I've lived in very humid places in my life and sometimes it just happens and it's unavoidable. And when that happens, that's okay. Try to get rid of the ones that have molded and if you have any that are still doing well, put them in a new basket and sometimes they pan out. Sometimes you lose a few and that's okay. So like I said, about two to four weeks with this it does depend where you live, but overall the basket method is very easy and a very beautiful way of drying herbs. The next method, the bundle method or the hanging method, is also a very simple and beautiful way of drying herbs and perhaps one I employ the most. I have quite a few bundles in uh, my apartment and just in my life always. Bundles are used to dry herbs with really long stems, stems that you can tie together. Bundles are perhaps a little bit easier than drying herbs with a basket as they require far less attention to dry. To craft a bundle, you need something to hang the herbs on, something to tie the herbs together, and the herbs. Typically, I tie my herbs together with twine. I know a lot of people use rubber bands and possibly have more success with those. Occasionally, when you're tying them with twine, the uh, herbs will fall through when they dry and kind of shrink. 
but rubber bands prevent that. I just tend not to really have rubber bands on hand and I always have twine, so it's up to you. Where you hang them is also up to you. I often hang them off of a single nail in the wall or on a piece of twine strung between two nails or any variation of the sort. As long as you have them hanging, you're good. To craft a bundle, gather your herbs in a bundle, tie them off with twine and hang them up. Often I like to just separate them into two like herb legs, if that makes sense, and then rest them between a wire or I'll just rest them on top of a nail. Uh, both of those methods tend to work pretty well for drying and you don't have to use an extra um, clip to dry them. Um, like a clothespin, but you can also clothespin them to a line if that is easiest for you. Then just allow them to dry. Once again, it's about two to four weeks, but wait till you hear them being crumbly and crunchy and you should be pretty good. They don't require as much attention. You don't have to shuffle the herbs. You can just let them be, but make sure it is in a temperature controlled, dark place or as dark as possible that isn't all too humid either. Now, sometimes I don't follow these rules very well because I like to look at my herbs while they're drying and it is ultimately okay if they uh, get some sunlight on them, but it can damage the quality of the herb over time. So it's something to keep in mind. Once your herbs are dry, it's time to store them. Storing them is pretty straightforward. Personally, I prefer to use glass jars that seal pretty well. I use a lot of mason jars and stuff of the sort. And when you're storing them, it is best to make sure that they are out of direct sunlight. So often I will keep them in a cabinet or in shelves that don't see direct sun. Once again, direct light will damage the potency of the herb. And so if you are keeping them, especially for medicinal use, it is important that they stay out of the sun. It is also important that you make sure to label your herbs. That is something that I often forget to do. And it is so crucial to making sure you remember which ones are which for the most part. For medicinal use, dried leaves and flowers typically last one to two years, whereas roots can last two to three. However, sometimes they'll last longer. You kind of just have to use common sense and your intuition with this. If the herbs still smell good and look good with color and still maintain some of their flavor or a lot of their flavor really, then they're still good. If they're kind of dull in flavor or looking dull in color and just don't really have much of a smell, they've lost a lot of their medicinal potency and I wouldn't use them for those purposes anymore. Additionally, if they're moldy, they've gone bad. Now, herbs that have been completely dried will not mold, but every once in a while you do pack some away that you may think are fully dried and they aren't. It happens all the time and that is perfectly okay. All in all, storing and drying herbs is very simple, very beautifully connecting practice, and it is a great step after foraging or just working in your garden. It allows you to preserve herbs from different seasons, bring them forward into your cooking, into your craft, just throughout the rest of the year. And uh, I absolutely adore the practice. It makes me feel far more connected to the plants I'm working with, and uh, it allows me to work with them for a lot longer. So I hope you found this useful and get to drying some herbs of your own. If you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you could check out my Patreon. There I share art, herbal profiles, book recommendations, and I share workshops as well. My monthly workshops go over a topic that you all pick, and there's a live stream that is up for two weeks after if you can't get there while the live stream is up. It's a super fun interactive lesson, and I just really enjoy getting to teach that way. Also, if you haven't seen my other channel, I'd recommend checking that out. There I share vlogs of my daily life, far more of the nature, herbalism, magic, all of those fun things. And uh, it's a place where I get to share a lot of things that I care about. And so if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and check that out. Both of these will be linked in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you soon.